Access to information is critical for enabling citizens to exercise their voice to effectively monitor and hold government to account and to enter into informed dialogue about decisions which affect their lives. It is seen as vital for empowering citizens, including vulnerable and excluded people, to claim their broader rights and entitlements. But in Uganda, there's a culture of secrecy anchored on a cake laws like the Official Secrets Act, the Code of Conduct and Ethics for Uganda Public Service. It's a craft that has been enlisted even by elite societies and pronounced in authoritarian and totalitarian regimes which have an antipathy towards the truth. But the current Uganda Constitution is a progressive piece of legislation. It gives primacy to access to information and public participation in governance as provided for in Article 41. Uh, before I bring in the panel this evening, let's have uh, Vox Pops from the public. My name is Kasaja Jonathan, and my view uh, on access to information is actually it's very limited according to my view. And the reason as to why I say it's very limited is um, our based on the generation in which we are in. Uh, we are in a generation whereby we are very young, and uh, the population itself contains close to 80 percent, and the generation is very young. And according to that, um, most of our information is basically accessed via social media. Let me say Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, and other social media platforms. And the reason as to I want to surely defend my point that access to information in Uganda is limited is according to the government policy that was introduced of OTT, whereby every person to access information via those platforms one had to pay OTT and most of the people of which couldn't afford that that means they were in, unable to access information and uh, my question to the minister is how does the government intend to help a young generation to access information without any barriers uh, my view in regard to access to public information in Uganda is that I think uh, the government needs to actually do a lot because uh, there's a lot of government, uh, you know, information that is uh, still in the coffers of uh, government departments and ministry that uh, I think the citizens of the country ought to actually know about. Uh, there are issues, for example, of oil and gas. We've heard of the oil agreements with the oil companies and uh, uh, different neighboring countries. And we've only been hearing about it in the press. But the details of these documents, I think every Ghanaian has a right to actually know what is in these documents and what that actually means for the country of Uganda and for the citizens of the country as well. So my question to the minister is actually is, uh, is that uh, what is the government doing? Because we have, uh, uh, we have a law on access to, you know, to information. Uh, so what is the government doing actually to make sure that these public documents, these agreements with uh, multinational oil companies, what is the government doing to ensure that the public, that any normal Ugandan can actually know exactly what these mean and what, for example, oil will, will mean to the lives of, of an ordinary, uh, ordinary Ugandan? Me, I'm a lawyer, professionally. I know where I can get such information. I know like if I go in this ministry, I can go in this office and get such information. What I believe, some of the ministries, over some of the government offices I've ever been to, they have brochures. But I think very few people ask for them. Yes, that's what I think. And I think Ugandans are not so much interested in reading. So 
maybe my view could be like maybe I can air it. I think people can easily listen to radios than telling them you'll pick a brochure there and read. It's not been prudent in most situations for different reasons. But for most obvious reasons that information, information is power. And if this is the power we all would like to have access to, to do so many other things, depending on how, who uses what information for what consumption to benefit what. So that information, public information, should be available to the public in, on different plus, platforms, for example, it can be online. For, if I log in on any site for any public office, I should be able to have access to that information. That would be enough to push me well, to another level. The Minister for Information, the same question is like, it's been a long time coming since all these kids have been going to university more than almost two decades now. And we have, been, we have had generations, almost kids going into information systems, information technology, studying all these things. Why are we using te the, the technology as old as Genesis? Oh, uh, and yet we have people here who are capable to do this. That's question number one. Question number two, do we have foreigners? Do we really need foreigners only to be the ones to come and man our own systems? If it's not a, uh, an Indian national, Chinese national, whoever it may be, name them that even our own local people can't do this? You, you, cannot, you cannot access information in this country. The, the law is passive in nature. We have the right in the Constitution, the Enabling Act is available, but the, we can't enjoy this, 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 this right. But, 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 but equally, most of these agencies even don't respect the, don't respect the, the Act or even, the, or even the, the regulations. And the Minister has not come up with any singular statement uh, reminding every government agency to comply with the Ugandans. Otherwise, otherwise we, are, we are suffering and struggling on our own, it is only the media assisting us to come when to, and assisting Ugandans to complain whenever they have been denied access to information. They, they always complain, but even as we speak today, even free interaction like social media is off, is off, and, and uh, it, 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 it is off now to a country which can even switch off free access, uh, uh, free, free sites. Can it support free access of information to, uh, from government agencies? <laughs> And there you are, you've heard it, information is power. Good evening, uh, viewers. Uh, welcome to Citizen Voices. Uh, we have a panel of experts. Uh, we have Mr. Samuel, Bishop Samuel, who is representing the Minister of ICT, and Marie Nanyanzi, who is a regular panelist uh, from Saudi Yawanainchi. Uh, they've, con they keep, they've conducted uh, research and she has data she'll be sh sharing with us this evening. Thank you very much, uh, lady and gentlemen. To start with you, Bishop Samuel, um, you've heard it from uh, the citizen voices on the streets, this culture of secrecy, this culture of um, suspicion. And yet uh, we have the constitution in place which allows the right to access of information. We have the Access of Information Act. We have the regulations as well, I think of 2011. And Access to information uh, anchors the culture of transparency, which also espouses the values of democracy. Why are you know, civil servants, why is government reluctant to give, allow access to information? Uh, thank you very much. Good evening, viewers of NTV, uh, particularly of this uh, program. Citizen Voices. As you said, my name is Bishop Samuel. I'm from the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance. First of all, let us talk about the Access to Information Act. Just briefly. And what is its purpose? The purpose of Action to Information Act is to promote an efficient, effective, transparent, and accountable government. Now, if you read subsection, subsection B, is to give effect to Article 41 of the Constitution by providing the right to access to information held by organs of the state, other than exempt records and information. Now, to answer your question, the, uh, I've seen the citizens' concern, of course. Uh, they are saying uh, access to information is really a bit difficult especially in government ministries and, and agencies. 
this is where I come to say that um, you need to understand that as a Ministry of ICT, we have tried to ensure that citizens have access to information based on this act. Actually, the access to info, the, the minister has uh, uh, the minister has set guidelines on uh, or has set guidelines on uh, on operationalizing the act. You see, and we we have all these channels. Ugandans viewing this pro this program, whatever we say, you have access to information to that one who's not watching this. Please spread the information. Don't keep it to yourself. The ministry has a toll-free line. Nine hundred. I believe. We, I believe we have over twenty-four million. Last time I checked, it was over twenty-four million Ugandans who have access to mobile phones. That you can call. There is a toll-free line that you can call. In case those uh, the ministries that you have said are not giving you information, that's one. Number two. We have a well-equipped digital media team at the ministry because uh, the ministry has uh, uh, it has accounts, uh, social media accounts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. We keep on putting their information, and where we see there is a gap, maybe uh, misinformation which has come through social media. Our digital media team really corrects it very quickly. Now. Again, we have the information access center. That is public at the ministry. That is public. You can come there, maybe ask what you want, and use the facilities which are there. If free internet, on top of that, there is my you I think some of you, you have, uh, you have uh, had, uh, seen on your, on your mobile phones when you're in town or moving in some parts of, the, uh, of town, you see my UG. That my UG is free. That is all government is trying to ensure that its citizens are in the know of anything they would like to know. Uh, the, other, the, uh, the other thing that we, uh, all uh, government ministries, agencies, their websites, we, we make sure we follow up that the websites are updated with information that any citizen that would like, uh, that would like to know. Radio, TV programs now like this one, okay. Once we are invited, we 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 answer all the queries and the questions that the citizen may have. Even the one hour uh, a government uh, government airtime. I'm glad that NTV gives it to us. That we communicate to people where there is gap, so that we, we we move together. This is a government that would like to move together with its people. Just before I bring in Marie, um, you seem to say yes, um, th that's the official don't practice, you put out information. But um, the concern is that you seem to cherry pick what you put out as information. For instance, not so long ago, some years ago, my colleagues um, in the media fraternity filed a suit in the, in the court of law demanding um, for the um, release of production sharing agreements in regard to the oil resource. And uh, this has never, government didn't comply with this. Two, um, the World Bank and uh, IMF, I think, put out very stringent conditions during the procurement process. Um, and, uh, you know, the PPDA guidelines um, were giving out, you know, relief and all these kind of things for the ministries and appropriating funds. But um, I think the last report I read, very few ministries had complied. Agriculture had try to comply, but the others had it. So the concern is, you seem to cherry pick what you put out. What people want, you don't put it out there. As it stands now, the argument from the government is that it is not in compliance. And uh, once the people know the ministry, actually, okay, you see, let me say we see what we want to put out and what we don't want to put out, we don't we don't release it, just not this one. Even media houses which are
Point number two. Why don't you release the oil sharing yeah, agreements? Production sharing agreements. Listen, I don't think you exhausted all ways and you said that we, ha we have failed to get the agreements. The minute, you, the minute you went maybe to the ministry concerned and you never got the agreements, it ended there. They went to court. Marie, to bring you in. Yes, uh, you, now, you now come to us and say, you know what? Yes, this is information we want to give to our people, but the ministry has failed. And then he said, okay, I came to your ministry. This is communication wanted to put out. Even your ministry didn't have, did you come? No. To bring in Marie, um, you've been going around the country uh, conducting research. Uh, what are the insights of your findings in regard to access to information and uh, citizen participation? Thank you, Emma. Good evening, viewers. So um, we have collected data, first of all, from the civil servants' perspective, and then collected data from the citizens. And what we saw from the, um, because it, this will help to show a gap that we notice. From the civil servants, they believe that in principle, they should be able to give out that information freely. But then we also notice that most of the elected and also the appointed officials are not aware of the ATI Act because it's in place, but they are not aware that it's there. Then we also noticed that most officials, because they don't know the ATI Act, they also don't know that they are legally obliged to give out some information that the citizens request for. And some of them uh, feel that this is because they have other laws that seem to constrain them, which shows us that there is a need for the civil servants to get more guidance on how the ATI Act works and maybe a need for them to have a key performance uh, measure on how they deliver that. Then from the citizen's perspective, we have seen that... Um, Citizens profess an interest to, have to know government held information. Then we also see that um, a number of them say that uh, the access to information is not that easy, that it's not easy to get some information. And then 1% of our adult population is the only proportion that is aware of the Access to Information Act which shows us that if at all I go to a government office and ask one time and I'm told that you can't get that information, I will give up because I don't know what I'm legally entitled to. Then beyond that, we do see that um, citizens are in support that the government should be able to restrict access to information that will, um, be, um, that will be vital to promote national security. So citizens do understand that there is some information that is uh, very sensitive and then it should be held back by government. But so far what we have uh, seen is that that limitation that citizens don't know the Access to Information Act really limits them on how far they can go in terms of ask asking information. It's similar to what um, Bishop was talking about that when you asked did you go back again, did you feel that you are entitled to actually go back again and ask, and what kind of feedback were you given? Because ideally, it should be written why you weren't given that information. But maybe we can get to know more, and then I'll share what other perspectives are coming through from the citizens. Because in addition to that, Section 9 gives you, gives you power to have those documents you are talking about. Section 9 of the, uh, of the uh, Access to Information Act it is access to information document may be granted to an applicant in one or absolutely most years. no one doubts okay. that the law exists it's the pragmatism we are talking about mm, but, but uh, to, 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 to take this forward um, we have seen ministries uh, we've seen senior uh, civil servants issue such as warning their subordinates about sharing information with journalists, with the public. And definitely this has a chilling effect on, our, on access to information. Okay, maybe what I, what I can say to that is, uh, it is uh, one, like, okay, let's say you have gone to a ministry and you wanted information, and let's say uh, 
you have gone to the right office, that is, and information cannot be good. So, you know a subordinate, basically, who is in fear of, even if he knows the law is there, he's in fear of his job, losing his job. The thing is simple. You come to me through the ministry, and you say, we want this information. It is as simple as that. Please, just come to the ministry. It is until we fail. That's when you can complain. But I don't think we can fail to get to the information you want. The agreements and so on. Basically, if we can release cabinet resolutions, we would have kept that to ourselves as, uh, as government, but we release them for public to know. But then how about... What's the, wrong the, the, with, what's the, sensitive about releasing? The, 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 but then what's wrong with, the, with you uh, releasing contracts? And you're supposed to know at the end of the day, it's you, the taxpayer. Yes. You want to know how your money is going to be spent. Exactly. So why don't you release those contracts? We have never refused. That's why I was saying, you need to go an extra mile. When you went there, it stopped there. And then you waited until you would complain. But you didn't come to us. If you would have come to us, you said that yeah, I, call, I called your minister, and then the minister said he cannot get the information. That would be another story. Now, uh, 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 she talked of uh, that access to information, and most citizens are not aware of the uh, citizens. I can answer that this in, in, in this way. For the first time, we are going to have what I would call a community mobilization and mindset change program. And it is going to start uh, in this next financial year. The ministry is going to start in this. So I think it will address um, all those gaps uh, for citizens to know this. And actually, we are taking even our government communication officers, district communication officers, to Chankwanzi to equip them with the more tools of information and how actually to give it to our people, basically. I think that will address the gap of citizens not uh, citizens not okay having not getting information the way they want it because we, it's it's not only here in kampala but even elsewhere in the country in other districts people need to have information so our district uh, of uh, communication officers should be in a position to give should be in a position to give uh, our people information about the one percent of adults getting information and now you're addressing the youth are not getting information. That one is it's two way. I can assure you, the youth can get information if they want to. They can choose to have it. A good number of them, they can choose to get the information or not to. Now, for those maybe who don't have access to internet, there are other ways. The local councils and the information that you cannot for the village local councils, they should be in the position. Let's say, for example. When we are, uh, government is, a minister is giving out mosquito nets, the information starts from your local council. The schedule is given. When you go and register, and you, you are even put in the know when the mosquito nets are going to come. So there is no excuse that you cannot get information at all. You can. You can. And now that we are going to start this, uh, the, 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 the mindset, uh, the community mind, uh, mindset program, Basically, that will also help. Now, when we talk about community uh, mindset program, it is going to start from the, uh, from the villages. So we can educate our people, please. Information can be got this. Either we can use radios, uh, t uh, television, and uh, uh, those who can access uh, uh, mobile phones. Such programs can really help. They can um, do really help. Marie, I so, yeah. we're not so rigid at information at all. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. We are not. <laughs> So, Bishop, um, I like the information that you're giving, that the youth can get the information and the adults can get that. But from the data that we have, it shows that 74% of the citizens get their information from government through a physical visit to that office. So the question that we have is, how will you change the mindset of the civil servants to be more willing to give out that information because the trend has been that um, successful requests for information have been declining. For instance, when we ask the people out there, were you given the information when you, uh, you went to get that? We asked that question in 2017 and the percentage was 66 percent who said that they were given that information, granted fully. Then come 2020, 
54% said they were given that information fully. So we see that there is a decline in those that are getting their information successfully. Then when we ask about how easy is it to get information, because now we need to really focus on the fact that citizens go physically to their offices. Not many of them get that information through the internet. So we see that uh, in 2017, 54% said it was very easy to get information when they go to those uh, civil servants or the different offices to get information. But uh, 2020, this figure has dropped to 38% from 54 in 2017. That means it's getting harder to get information. And you, we need to understand what is it that has been happening over time because you've mentioned there are a number of platforms that are the government is really uh, coming up with like my UG and so on. But why is it that we are seeing a declining trend in access to information, especially when Ugandans go out there to, to look for that? In fact, we also did see that in terms of how many visits did it take for them to get information successfully, in 2017, 54% said it took one visit. 2020, only 26% say that it took one visit, meaning it took a lot longer to get that information. You have to go to that office maybe four times or three times to get that information, which in the end will discourage someone from going back or even recommend that please visit this office to get that information. Uh, Bishop, uh, just um, as a follow-up, you know many of our young people use uh, cyberspace to access information. Now, if government slaps it, a tax, its fiscal policy is to introduce a tax on uh, the internet, how then are you trying to, you know, be able to sustain access to information? But you see, maybe what you're trying to tell me, the only mistake that the government did is to say that now this, this is tax for internet. I think it would have been a hidden tax into something so that that doesn't come out that way. But that is the, uh, the tax. Why, why would they hide it? The, the, and that's what I'm saying, because now the way you're putting it out is like now a crime to introduce that tax. But even if, even if you go out, even if it's not in Uganda, elsewhere in the world, where is that? that tax, even in US, that really? tax is there. But you know when you're buying a handset, a handset, that tax is hidden inside, it's, it's hidden there. But now for us, we said, okay, and th there was a reason as to why they had to separate that, ta that tax. And it's, it's just a small tax, really. It's just a small tax. Not, we didn't introduce uh, a tax that is not affordable. It's just a, a small tax, and it's for, for the purpose of building the country. We want A, B, C, D. we want a lot of services, by but the way. Know, but if you look at our resource envelope, mm. It's not also you may, you may think it's, it's 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 very small, but many youths out there who, are, who have limited capacity may not think so. Why wouldn't you perhaps introduce a capital gains tax for the for the wealthy and the civil servants who steal a lot of uh, uh, money from government? I don't know a civil servant who has ever stolen money by our taxpayer and not processed according to our rules. Really? Yes, I don't, and I give me a name of that civil servant who stole money and is still out there, is not processed according to our rules. Just give me one, we are here, just give me one. No, I'm not here We to are not, we, to process I can tell you, that is, people. that is something that we abuse. We do not like it, and that's why when a civil servant is caught into that act, I will tell you, he will face the law. He or she will face the law. Will face the law. Because Uganda will not move on when such people are, are, are left seated comfortably. Okay? That is one. A youth you are talking about, I've seen youth who have handsets of even 4 million shillings. Real. Yeah, but that's the exception to the rule. Okay? Yes, I know, but is, they have four, they, do, is it... Are you telling me that a youth who can afford a handset of 4 million shillings, really OTT can become a problem. Bishop, mm -hmm. how many youths have handsets of 4 million shillings? Most of them don't have employment. 
So that's an exception to the rule. No, no. Let, let me tell you one thing. I know you are trying to you are trying to smash the tax issue, but sincerely speaking, that tax is is what we can, the, the minute you can you can load on your bundles, okay? That's a small contribution to your country revenue, by the way, so that we can have other services. So we, if we don't if we don't have taxes, okay, you tell me if we don't have taxes, in how are we going to move? In essence, what I'm saying, mm. it's a kind it's kind of retrogressive in nature. And I gave you an example that you can have a capital gains tax of people who are wealthy, and this is what happens elsewhere in elite societies. Rather than you know imposing a tax on a section of people, a section of young youngsters who are trying to be innovative. Who are trying to use these platforms on social media to to to, to you know the, the to look out for opportunity. The innovative people you are talking about, government is even supporting them. Government supports them, like the Minister of ICT has uh, has an innovation hub. We do support innovators. There is a grant for that. And you are talking about wealthy people. What is the percentage of wealthy people in Uganda? That we now we can we can base on that tax, so that we we, we, we put it onto them. How many are they? We are not yet even at uh, the much vaunted you see, some status. Now, collect, but maybe co to bring co in collectively, Marie collectively, we go collectively, break, collectively um, that's how we have to move to go forward together. Marie, um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, statistics do you get in regard to you know young people and and um, access to information? Okay, so um, the statistics. Before we have in terms of uh, access to information it seems like this is uh, really spread out in terms of uh, what information requests they are looking for we don't see uh, a specific skew but we do see that when it comes to um, information on expenditure wrongdoing and so on that is uh, a request that is largely made by men but women are equally asking for information youth are asking for information, the men are also asking for information, and they want to know things to do with the health services, education, development uh, opportunities, and those are the things that sometimes they are not actually able to get. We'll pick it up from there. Let's have a commercial break. Uh, this is Citizen Voices. Welcome back. This is Citizen Voices, and our hashtag is Amplifying Citizen Voices. Uh, Marie, to bring you back, I'm very concerned about um, the research in regard to um, um, interest in you know crimes like corruption, wrongdoing, uh, because I want that should be distinct from when citizens, a citizen, for instance, comes to ask about. Uh, things to do with uh, COVID vaccination. I think uh, the officials in charge are much eager to give out, you know, this, this, this kind of information than to give out information they are a little bit worried about, for instance, about, you know, secretive contracts and things like that. What are your findings? Thank you, Emma. So um, from our findings, we tried to understand if at all someone is requesting for information from a different office, are they actually able to get that? We saw that uh, among those that asked for information from the LC3, say, about a child's uh, birth registry, the consistently from 2017 to date, 7 out of 10 say that that information, they feel they are confident they will easily get that. Same to uh, if they ask about where to go uh, to report a broken water point, that information they can easily get. But when it comes to um, if they want to know how to report an incidence or wrongdoing by a certain official, this has actually uh, dropped. The confidence that they will get that information has dropped. We see that only 33% of Ugandans adults feel that they will be able to get that information on where to report wrongdoing. Again, we also see that uh, when it comes to accessing information on the different development plans 
for their community or for their district as well as budget plans, we see that there is low confidence that they will get that information. Now that is 25% uh, that are confident they'll get that information. So as uh, we are talking about NDP3, mindset changing, uh, issues of human capital development and that other different programs that are in place, if citizens are not confident that they will get that and yet they are the beneficiaries of such programs, I think there is something that we really need to explore. How do we get citizens to access that information because we have seen consistently that there is a decline in the request. So if at all um, there is probably no key performance measure or indicator for a public servant, then how are they going to be measured that yes, you successfully uh, got this number of information requests and you successfully gave this feedback. If at all that is not done, I believe that even if they have so many trainings and then they are not measured on that, it's very likely that the pattern may continue. Uh, Bishop, um, you are, as you are aware, technology is you know, evolving now and then and it's a, it's a key facet of life today. E-commerce plays out on social media, uh, supply chains and all these kind of things. Um, not so long ago, uh, the stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange and the others had the top five or so companies were oil companies and brick and mortar companies, but today it's tech companies. Um, during the campaign, during the election period, government shut down Facebook. Um, in your view, was that called for, or perhaps the continued shutdown of one of those very vital channels of communication. I saw a minister saying that perhaps Uganda, Ugandans should replicate their own kind of Facebook. It's a good idea, but I don't think there's uh, any snowball chance in hell that it would have, you know, the kind of Facebook that uh, the youths were depending on. on. What's your view about that? Facebook was developed by someone out there in a the country and it went on in the whole world. Now, I don't know what makes, I support that minister who said so. Why do you think if a Ugandan develops an app, for it it can't work, or it can't go anywhere, it, or it can't be spread anywhere else in the world? It is only those apps which are developed by those people that we have to depend on and you have to have, to have belief that they are the ones who, who, which work. We have here very young men who are innovative, who can come up with such applications. I would like to one day, maybe to come back to hear that actually you are in support of that. So that why we don't can you support do it. them and you remove the we do, retrogressive tax? We do, we do support them. We do, there is a grant for them at the ministry. There is a whole hub in Nakawa for them. They can use the tools at the hub. Don't say we don't support, we do. Mm -hmm. That is one. Point number two, you have talked about, okay, why did we shut down uh, Facebook, eight months before, okay, depending on it. Before, the question would be like, before government decided to shut down Facebook, why, would it, why did it shut down Facebook? Because it was there. Then at a certain point, for the good of, of peace, you see when others are enjoying, uh, disorganizing other people's peace, they are thinking about themselves, not others actually, who may not want what you are doing. What was happening during campaigns? It was some Ugandans were using Facebook or so some social media tools as a route of to mobilize hooliganism. It is very easy when hooliganism is organized, tires are burnt, people's property is vandalized and stolen, and the media brings cameras really to capture that. And then it is spread all over the world, like as if 
government cannot have a solution to that. And on top of that, this Facebook we are talking about, it, it, it shut down government officials' accounts completely, only them, and it left, it is true, and it left others to be on Facebook. Why did they do that? Why? If it was to close accounts, they would have closed accounts even for the others, for the other group. But they did, uh, of a few government officials, especially our digital media team, those colleagues of mine, the, the accounts were, were closed. Actually, up to now, they have never been opened. Facebook has never. So if you talk about, let's talk about the balance of usage of Facebook. So even the Facebook people out there, they, did not, they looked at one side and they did not look at the other side. What they want, I don't know if they, they were sponsored by people who want to see that Uganda becomes shapeless. This is where in a very serious democratic process where people were making choices of their leaders. And others, for them, they were thinking that, okay, if we spread such, such a rumor or and justified the news. It was working for a certain group of people, but it was not working for others. Marie, do you think um, the issue of disinformation, uh, I saw that the former Secretary of State, United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, saying disinformation is becoming quite problematic. Um, people using all sorts of things or, or bots, um, People putting out, you know, uh, the issue of false news. Is it an issue that we are grappling with um, within the narrative of access to information? Thank you, Emma. So uh, the issue of uh, disinformation, misinformation. Of course, we do see that there are a number of falsehoods out there, specific to COVID. I think that is what has really showcased what what happens, and of course, in politicking. But in this case, I would really like to step away from the politicking and get to what can the officials at the ministry do to make the experience better for Ugandans. Because in the break, Bishop mentioned that there are some things that they will be doing to ensure that when someone goes to a, to a government office, they'll be getting that information. And he gave it as a, a blanket, but it would be good to hear what is it exactly that is going to happen? Because um, as a citizen, uh, I would not like to see that the numbers keep declining of those that feel that they will successfully get information. Because even when you look at the, the people that know where to get information, for example, if I told you, ask someone, if you're going to start a business, where, which, info, which office would you go to to get information? 70% of the citizens don't know where they would go. Then if you ask about uh, where would you go if at all you want to inquire about government uh, development programs, 66% do not know. Yet a lot of money has been allocated to ensure that citizens are engaged or are benefiting from these development programs. Um, again, we also see if at all uh, someone wants information on agriculture, only 18% say that they they would go to the agriculture office within their district. On education services, they seem to know. Uh, women issues, 65% say that they don't know which office they would go to. Yet we have the UEP program, which is there to benefit women. So for me, um, I think as a citizen, it's important that the ministry comes out strongly and informs us on what is actually being done to ensure that citizens are able to get information on all this because I believe um, also that a high number of Ugandans don't understand the government uh, structure at uh, the local level. So if at all I don't understand that structure, how will I know which office to go to? I'll be left with uh, guessing or go to my LC1 who we have seen that consistently is a key source of information for Ugandans. And the question that uh, remains is, is the LC1 well informed about the different programs and where to direct the citizens? So if at all I could 
hear some feedback on that. As a citizen, I think I'd be. I, I, yeah, I guess. I guess one of the things that you can, I can discern from why the LC is a bit effective is also the level of information. It's, you know, you know it, it serves the low bro kind of uh, uh, population. So it's not the kind of information that um, uh, the elite uh, or citizens really would demand for. Uh, so typically at the LC level, about a vaccine and things of the like. But to bring in Bishop, um, we know that states uh, use the pretext of national security, um, of uh, you know that kind of excuse, to muzzle uh, access to information. And isn't this the case uh, with this country? Not every, not every information is national security. Let us say, make it clear, please. Because as far as I'm concerned, now the information that we are talking about here is to address, actually, the lower person, someone at the village level, who even doesn't know if that word national security exists, but he needs to get information on the things, let's say, like she has talked about. Someone needs to get information maybe from Minister of Agriculture or Minister of Energy. They don't know where to go really. Or about electricity. Maybe they have tried to call the electricity people, they are not responding. So now they are, where should we want to get information for this? They don't know where to go. The answer is one. I'm here to give you national guidance on this issue. Just to call toll free. This does not mean you should have a smartphone even if you don't have a smartphone. It's a total free line, 900. And say, I want information on this. Our people will record down what you want to know, get the information, give it to you. Like she said, like she said if you don't go to that particular uh, uh, organization or ministry, you can't get the information. Basically, yes, you don't need to come to the ministry, just, just call. And secondly, we are on we are on these media platforms. We are on radio, we are on TV, newspapers, okay, newspapers, and even in digital media. The information you may you can ask a question. Those who can access what uh, kind internet. of information do you have? Any out there? information. Information is information you may not know one is interest. Everyone has their own interest. You, your interest may be oil contracts. Has may not be. Mm -hmm. Has maybe maybe fertility rate at the moment mm -hmm. in Uganda. So the information now you would, both of you want is different. So it depends on one's interest of information. So you call for us, we shall guide you and be like, okay, this actually let us labor and get it for you because you have already paid that task for us to do tax, tax for us to get you that information and we will call you back immediately that you wanted information about A B C D. This and this is like this. And for you, even your oil contracts and other national security you, you, you have talked about, so we shall find a way of giving the information. And, 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 and Bishop, Bishop, let me and put it to you this way, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to, 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 to offer clarity, that usually there's no problem about, you know, uh, information about fertility or the other simpler things. But what we're grappling with as a, as a nation is, are things like, for instance, corruption. It's the Achilles heel of this country. So that's the kind of information that's vital. It's not so much about how to get you know, a vaccine, how to get certain seeds. That's the sim most simple kind of thing. You, you seem, and I'll go back to what I said earlier on, you seem to cherry pick what kind of information you want to present and leave out what is much more important in terms of this process of transparency. Emma, I would like to uh, probably uh, give a different angle to that because um, you, you keep talking about the bigger information. But the majority of our citizens are interested in how to make ends meet. If you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, they're at the bottom. They're looking at food, basic needs. That is what the majority are looking for. 
So how does that majority get that information? Because if at all there is a bishop, you've mentioned that there is the option of call that line. But we know that mobile phone ownership at household level is highly skewed towards the wealthy. So doesn't that eliminate the poorer citizens? So again, I'll go back to that issue. How do we ensure that those that are in those offices are actually giving the information and, that we are requesting And definitely for. what I'm trying to um, seek answers for, at the end of the day, trickles down to the common man. Because when you have corruption, they can't get drugs in hospital. When you have corruption, the food aid won't go to the most needy communities. So corruption is a, is a, is a big deal. Uh, perhaps, um, Bishop, uh, as we come towards the end, um, how can we see that um, civil servants, how can we see that the ministry um, heeds this clarion call to see that um, civil servants no longer treat people with suspicion in regard to access to information, that the public can easily access of these offices and seek you know, documents in regard to contracts? How can we improve this? The genesis of it all, sincerely speaking, the word public is public. These offices are supposed to be accessible. It is really very wrong of a public servant to make it difficult for Uganda to access your office. Those people in those offices are, are doing it in wrong, and they are the ones who are making government work harder. But I also, I, I condemn it, it's not good. That's why there are public offices, they are not personal, they are not private. When, when, when a citizen comes and wants to have information, please guide them accordingly. That's why you are in that office. It is very wrong to deny a citizen uh, office. Now, how, how to improve on, 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 on citizens getting information to improve more? I've talked about the community mobilization and the mindset change program. That is uh, beginning next financial year. That one will help. Will help our, our people to get information right actually from the local councils for anything they need to know. Ugandans, as we wind up, I would like you to I would like to assure you that your government is a transparency government. The issue of corruption is not a secret. We have tried, we have put it out there. And it is all of all, all of us to fight corruption. We have an anti-corruption unit office. It is there where you can report, and you can even call us. So there is no Please secret about corruption. In that in, in yeah. So uh, basically, I would, I would like I would like you to have confidence in your government and its systems that we are here to serve you. And where you not do, you don't get information, just to call nine hundred, which are available to you. Marie, in one minute, please wrap it up. Thank you so much uh, for the, to the Ministry of uh, ICT and National Guidance for giving us the time to actually share the citizens' feedback and get some responses. We feel that there is a lot more that we're asking for and some of them are yet to be answered. But thank you once again. Yeah, you've been watching Citizen Voices and I'm your host. I've been your host, Emmanuel Mutaizewa. Thank you for watching this program. Have a good evening. Don't forget our hashtag. Uh, it's amplifying citizen voices.